on today's episode, Missy and I are talking about having fun. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace, and uh, Missy and I are here once again to talk about ways that we can find inner peace and happiness in life, and practical tips that can help us to do that. So today we're going to be talking about having fun and enjoying our excitement in life. So let's get that started. How are you, Missy? I'm doing great. Things are uh, uh, moving along for us over on this side. A uh, little hot outside, as I was telling Chris before we got started, that you know you can go from this nice sleek hairdo to a, a you know nice uh, bushy hair, and and it's uh, definitely makes for a fun situation. Definitely makes for great conversation on what in the heck is going on. Um, most of the time, it's like sticking your finger in a like socket, so which that's not really that much fun, but you know, makes for makes for interesting conversation. <laughs> it, it definitely does that to my hair too when it gets really humid. <laughs> yeah, but how about you? How are things going for you guys? Well, so you know, living through uh, virus time and. Um, you know, some things are loosening up for us uh, over here in Maryland right now. Um, for those who are watching the video, uh, I'm sitting outside and just kind of enjoying the weather. It's, it's a little humid today. I'm not happy with that. So I have a, a fan just in front of me all, off camera to hopefully uh, help. But, um, but other than that, it's a gorgeous day out here. I mean... Sun is out, and you can see the trees behind me. So, yeah, it looks amazing. Well, yeah. So, uh, so we were kind of talking a little bit about um, how a lot of people were having anxiety, and uh, you were you were talking about how they kind of stifle their excitement to have fun. And I was just kind of uh, wanted to go a little bit further into that um, for for our listeners. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the reasons to bring up this topic, you know, is that over the years, I, I've heard variations on the scene from my clients that, you know, that they want to temper their enjoyment or temper their fun. And part of that, that I, I kind of get is they're talking about loss of control. And I think it's more the unknown. But for people who, you know, live your day, day in and day out, predominantly in stress and anxiety or, you know, depression, we get those blips of feeling, hey, that was exciting or that was fun or I got a little bit of hope in life. What we've kind of ta taught ourselves in, in our mind is that that's temporary, you know, and, and the anxiety is permanent. So... I had a client just the other day talk about that, that, you know, why get overly excited because I know something's going to go wrong and I won't fall as hard, you know, so I think that's one of the things that, you know, it's important to understand the living in the moment, wow, yeah. that, you know, if we live in the moment, enjoy the fun, yeah. even though... Now, I'll be a realist, even though, you know, down the road, you might not have an exciting moment or the anxiety comes back or something negative happens, but don't let a possible negative event down the future impact the actual event that you're feeling right now. You know, and, and I talk with my clients about, you know, it, it's, a, it's like the, the law of rhythm, right? You know, everybody has peaks, we're on the top of the wave, we're surfing, we're having a great time. And then sometimes we're in, in the valley, you know, and, um, but for me, like, those are the highlights of life, like having that much fun, like, like, there's your parasol again. 
you know. Um, if you're watching the video, my umbrella decided to spin around my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it, to me, that, like, that's the fun of being in the moment, right? You know, simple things like that and finding joy and pleasure of, of the little things that, that um, give us that will and that yearning for, for more life, like more fun. I don't want to be, um, you know, um, if we focus on the negative, then we are going to only notice those things. You know, and I don't want to be positive poly, but at the same time, like, you know, when you're looking for, you know, the birds chirping and the butterflies flying by and the, and the breeze, you know, you're seeing the, the joy that life brings when you don't have to do anything. Like, that's free. Those are the, the things that we get to appreciate in life. And, and that's what brings us high. You know, it's like when we throw dirt on the diamond, the diamond's going to get dirty. And, and that's kind of what we do when we, when we stifle our excitement over the great things that we have coming to us in life. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, for people who know me, I'm definitely not the let's go sing in the fields and, you know, that type of person. But <laughs> what I've been doing... And, and it's kind of a joke in the, with, with some of my other co-workers for one of my jobs. Um, and now that we're still in quarantine and working from home, you know, we, we just text. But, okay, this is going to sound really crazy. But this is a way I can have fun. Instead of, especially when I'm outside, a lot of bugs. Bugs can be irritating. Why am I going to let that take away from my happiness? So I've decided that when a bug comes by, I name it. Nice. And we have a little conversation. <laughs> That's great. So, you know, um, the farmhouse that I'm moving to has these like small dog-sized mosquitoes. I don't necessarily do that with them. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I got, I got it. They gotta feed their families and all, but um, I'm running from them when I get, when I see them. But no, I, I, I have. Uh, Mike the mosquito likes to come by at night, and in the house I have Mary Moth. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, it's you know, but okay, I'm not that crazy, but. <laughs> Why not, though? Well, but well that's the thing. I mean, you can enjoy life this way. You know what? I have to tell you, like, you know, um, I was just kind of having a very similar kind of conversation. It's like leaves and, I mean, trees and plants and blades of grass. Like, those are all living things. And, like, the, the thing about it is, like, I will cut flowers and I will put them in my house. And I'm literally killing the flowers. But I don't feel bad about that, right? But when a human life is, is taken and, you know, not to go down a dark road, we are all putting judgment on that, like, oh, you know. And so the crazy thing is, like, the fun of, of what you're doing with, you know, naming these animals, these, these little critters, like, that's a blast, you know. And that brings those highlights um, you know, it's just it's just a game, and, and that's the childlike wonder that that I hope everybody, in some way, shape, or form, implores. I mean, it brings into their life. You know, um, when I was a kid, road trips like it was like you know watching a little man run and jump from sign to sign, or you know, <laughs> a playing the alphabet game when you were driving down the road and and not doing mind numbing things. You know, sometimes it was watching the line on the side of the road and just. You know, that was a little mind numbing, but like rather than electronics and in the videos to keep us entertained, um, why not do things like that again, you know, to mm -hmm. make it fun and be creative? Well, you know, and, and the way that I figure it is in the sense of mindfulness is, you know, if you're going to look at some of the little things, you know, like say the mosquitoes coming by, I mean, sure, I can have fun in naming them, but most of them I end up smacking. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, you know, spend some time thinking about them and their life. Yeah. You know, when you look at it, I mean, the mosquito is annoying because, yeah, if a mosquito comes in, it takes on my blood, it's going to itch, and I'm going to be miserable. But I also have to look at the other side of it and think, but it's doing what it does. Yeah. You know, and if it's doing what it does, it has a purpose somewhere. You know, and, and then I start looking at how we all fit into everything else. 
you know, so it's like, you know, what positive thing does the mosquito do? And then when you look one layer above, what animal do we have that controls the mosquito population? You know, what animal controls an animal's population? What animal controls, you know, because everything is here either for a reason to do something either positive toward, you know, the environment, or you've got other creatures who are here to kind of keep the population in check. Yeah. You know, so you don't have, you know, like just a big cloud of mosquitoes. Um, you know, you've got hopefully just enough. Um, but mindfully for me, though, yeah, one, that helps keep me focused on the present moment. And two, helps me to understand, well, where is my place in things? So if I'm going to look at all of those creatures and where they all fit, well, where do I fit? Nice. So, you know, in, in that playful way, what, what is my purpose and point in here? You know, is it just to maintain a population number? Is it a, a positive purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it gives moment for a thought. One, one thing that I want to add to that is like in doing what you're doing is, is you're being the observer of what's happening, right? You're being the observer of what's going on on the movie screen of your life. And yep. in doing that, you know, you get to choose whether you're focused on the positive or the negative or even staying neutral over everything that happens. If, if to me, uh, one of the lessons that I feel like I've been embodying and, and, um, and witnessing lately is that all voices or all circumstances are the echoes of the voice of God. So, you know, I can learn from everything that's happening in my experience and it's my choice to do so, you know, if I'm willing to look, you know, yep. and, and that happens to be positive, negative, whatever. But like, I want to focus on the fun. I want to focus on the good things that are happening, you know, whether it's reading a book or sitting outside in the grass and letting my toes feel, you know, the little bugs run underneath or whatever it is. It's, it's, uh, it's how we're choosing to live. And it really does boil down to it being a choice. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I began to teach myself when I was working on my own stressful life and trying to find peace was whatever something positive, beautiful, whatever would happen, you know, so say I'm walking outside and, and you see this wonderful cloud or, you know, like right now I'm sitting here and it's a little humid out and I, if a breeze comes by and it feels really good. Yeah. You know, in those moments, I, I just, you know, thinking in my own head and just say, thank you. Yeah, being grateful. That's amazing. Uh-oh. And I'm like, oh, uh, you know, that was nice. Thanks. We lost, that you for a attitude. we lost you for a minute. Oh, no. Am I back? <laughs> yeah, you're back now. But, um, you know, you, you were talking about the breeze and how, you know, it felt good and, and just being grateful. So I'm sorry. I just missed that part. Yeah. So I, it, it was just where when those things happen, I, I just say to myself, thank you. You know, so that it, it gives a level of appreciation that I can feel, and then hopefully that changes my attitude and not focus on a negative piece, you know, like it's too humid hours, you know, whatever it might be. Well, and, you know, and kind of getting back to what you were saying in the beginning about how, you know, your, your client um, was like, I don't, I want to kind of stifle my excitement about what's going to happen, you know, like being in the moment, if, if you're able to just live and feel in that moment and try not to predict, then I feel like, you know, you suffer less when you try to predict the outcome because then we're attached to what we think should happen. And with our little human experience, we don't get to say what's going to happen or how the outcome is going to be. We just get to focus on what we want. So if I want happiness and, and things to be grateful for in my life, I can only be that to hopefully attract that to myself. And so, um, if she, he or she, I don't know which, is focused on like the anxiety of, of waiting for the shoe to drop, then that's what they're giving their attention to. 
And in their circumstances, that's what they're going to be a witness of. And that's what they're going to attract because you can only attract things that you already are. I mean, obviously what you focused on is going to become your primary. You know, it's like I always give the example, you know, with something like a headache. If you get a headache and you stay focused on the headache, it's going to get worse. Yeah. You know, if, if you get the headache and maybe you take aspirin or whatever, but then divert your attention, yeah. I bet you the headache is better. You know, and partly because you took medicine, but also partly because, well, I'm not focused on it anymore. You know, so, yeah, if, if I want to focus on the anxieties and the fact that, you know, the, the shoe is going to drop, I will almost guarantee that shoe's going to drop. Yeah. You know, if, if you're looking for a problem to happen, I'll guarantee you're going to find one. Yeah. But why isn't the opposite true? You know, as I said to this client, you know, you, you spend much of your time focused on all those negative thoughts. Why would you not do that when you have a positive thought? Because they, uh, I think that it's an undeserving thing. Mm -hmm. Like I think that that's an unworthiness thing. Again, we've thrown dirt on the diamond for so long. You know, sometimes that you think, oh well, I'm not going to shine. I'm, I I don't deserve to shine because I'm dirty. And then, I mean, really, what would we do if we were actually dirty? We would just go shower, right? And so it's just as simple as going. I don't believe that I'm unworthy anymore. And the more you build that muscle of allowing the worthiness then the more the more you'll feel worthy and, and you'll have those good things that you'll witness in your experience yeah they, exactly so you know i think that's one of the things that you know don't wait for you know happiness i mean try to find happiness and find fun but yeah you're going to appreciate it deeper when you begin to understand your own self-esteem and your own self-worth you know, because you're totally right, you know, that if I don't feel that I deserve to be happy, then I'm not going to look for happiness or I'm going to dismiss those feelings, well, you know. But, it's a muscle. Yeah. If you're going to exercise your muscles. You're going to the gym the first couple of days. You might be kind of sore. You know, by the end of the first month, you're like, okay, well, maybe I should move up so that I can keep working it out and getting stronger. If you're only working the unworthiness muscle, then it's going to be way stronger than your worthiness muscle. So, like, when I first kind of got into a self-development, I mean, uh, people laughed at me, but I, I had to do affirmations because, and I did not believe them. I, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you that I was like, you're pretty, you're beautiful, you're kind, yeah, 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 whatever. And... But the more that I did it, you know, and the more that I honestly had fun with it, it was like, you know, damn girl, you look good, you know, and say fun things to myself. And it was like, wow, I really do feel good about myself. And I would notice that it was like a rubber band. You stretch it out, it bounces back. You stretch it out, it bounces back. Mm -hmm. and that stretch didn't go past a certain point, you know, and so then I could stretch further. You know, and it, it's getting outside of our comfort zone. It's willing to be wrong, to look bad, to, you know, to um, to not be safe, to feel uncomfortable, and to release control of what we're actually experiencing or what we think we have to have control of. Yeah, and, and it does come back down to control and, you know, what we can and can't control and, you know, what we've talked about in previous episodes. Um, you know, and, and I agree with you, it's a thing of training yourself to accept that you can be happy and that you can have fun. Um, you know, if, if you have little kids around or, you know, you've had little kids around, try to imitate that childlike behavior. You know, and I'm not saying be childish, you know, that that's selfish and, you know, immature, but... You know, when you see with, with little kids that inquisitive notion, that wonder at everything, that, you know, so as adults, I think, we lose it. you know, part of it is we, we educate ourselves out of it. You know, I, I don't have the wonder of the anthill because, well, I can tell you all about ants and anthills and what that means. Yeah. So how do you find that wonder again? You know, and, and that's where, you know, I'm like, you know, okay, well, maybe I named the ant colony. You know, I, I think, you know, about, well, where are they going? What are they doing? Um, find that wonder again. 
Uh, one of the things that um, uh, I have, you know, been working with lately is finding the balance between masculine and feminine, right? So, yeah. so masculine mentality, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be male. I don't mean it like that. But a masculine mentality is like hunt and find, hunt and find. You know, you you are the hunters. Uh, you know, masculine is a hunter mentality, and uh, feminine is more of a gathering mentality. You know, like women you know, have more of a tendency to get information, get an information, get information, keep gathering, gathering, gathering. Well, in that we get to be creative. Well, you know, well there's too much gathered in this basket. So what am I going to do? Well, let me put this on my head. I'll bring out my apron and I'll keep putting more in and I'll keep gathering, right? Men, it's like, you know, have the task, do it. Have the task, do it. And that's the hunt find mentality. And the balance of, I mean, in my work, I, I'm, I am a doer. I, I have a task, let's get it done. I have a task, get it done. But I have found that in developing the more feminine aspect of myself, that being creative and having fun with it um, has brought so much more joy to my life. Like I love to design, I love to write. And in doing those things, it's not just a task that gets to be done. It's a fun task that gets to be done. And so um, just keep that in mind as you're, you know, it's okay for a man to have feminine uh, qualities and it's okay for a woman to have masculine qualities. And, and in that divinity, and finding the balance, I think that you'll you'll see that every aspect of life can be fun. And I use this term, but I, I'll, I'll I'll curb my mouth when I say it. But shuffling <laughs> poo can be fun if that's you know like that. You can make it a fun task. It doesn't have to be something that's miserable. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's our perspective on that and that balance. You know, so. Like I say, the the masculine and feminine in, in this case, right, doesn't mean male female, um, but for all uh, peoples to have, you know, a bit of the masculine, a bit of the feminine. But it's it's also how you look at it. You don't have to be expert either. You know, like, like I could say, you know, I'm not overly creative. You know, but it's how you define creative. So. You know, if I say I'm not overly creative, I'm actually knocking my creativity. Yeah. You know, so I, th I think realistically what, what I need to be saying is I'm creative, yet there are people who have a more full sense of creativity or, you know, might be more creative than I or have a, a deeper gift of that. But that's not negating what I have. It's just acknowledging this is mine. Somebody else's strength. Somebody else's. Yeah. Um, I think that also uh, the have to get to mentality is something that we could really get to address in the having fun. Because having fun is a get to, right? Because you get excited about it. Like I get to go have fun. I get to go to this beach party or this cookout with my friends or this concert. Or I, I get to. I'm super excited. And a have to mentality is like, I have to go to work. I don't mm -hmm. want to think about it. I don't want to put the effort towards. And what if you started to talk about everything with a get to mentality? I get to go spend time with my kids. I get to go walk the dog. I get to go move uh, a friend or whatever it is that you're doing. You'll start to recognize that the psychology of the get to mentality will begin to make everything fun for you. Yep. And, and, and it's all in what you make of it and in, in that perspective, you know, like you say, if, if I'm going to shovel poo, I mean, I may not say like, wake up in the morning and go like, yay. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little worried about that. But you're right. I also don't have to use that as, you know, drudgery and, you know, depression, because what am I going to make out of it? You know, so it is there while I'm doing that can I be thinking of writing a novel or you know thinking of life or you know whatever it may be I can say all right I don't like the task I'm doing but the task is so repetitive I can be thinking of other things yeah. and in that way I can make this fun so I, I haven't made that task itself necessarily fun but I've made that time fun 
Yeah. You know, I, I can do something that I want to do, at least through my imagination. Well, you know, and that's why I feel like like a lot of people like listen to music when they're doing mundane tasks. Like, yeah. I love to cook and I love to put love into my food. At the same time, I love to dance while I'm cooking and I love to, you know, I love to dance while I'm cleaning. I love to listen to music while I'm walking, you know, and there's also peace in not doing those things at the same time, you know, but it's just um, finding what you can enjoy at the same time that maybe you're doing something that you don't have as much enjoyment in. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that that's the whole point. And really what it comes down to is, is, again, looking at how little kids do it, is you live in the moment with the small things. Yeah. You know, and even as we've been talking, I, I happen to notice this really bizarre bug started walking over my keyboard, and I'm not a fan of spiders, I'll just say. <laughs> I don't think it was a spider. I've never seen this thing before. Yeah. But it looked like a cross between a spider and an ant, but it had this really deep red back end and red tips on its um, antennas. Wow. Sounds it was kind of funky looking. Yeah. <laughs> now I cut my hand. Oh, he's actually back. I cut my hand away, as I just did. <laughs> We well, don't want to like fling the thing because well, red's my favorite color and it's got the, that kind of cool red coloration on it. And I don't know what it is. Well, maybe this happened uh, to your red umbrella. Ah, uh, that's that, that's what it is. <laughs> so yeah, if anybody listening knows, please comment. But it started to freak me out. But then you notice that's part of the the little things. Right. You know, I mean, I, I can then imagine as, as the thing is kind of sitting there and maybe noticing me thinking, what the heck is that? Yeah. You know, is that friend, foe? Should I run? Should I, you know? <laughs> my, one so of my maybe, clients calls it analysis paralysis. Like, I'm not going to do anything because I've overthought it too much. So I don't want to touch it. I don't want to go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh, here he is. Well, I'm Back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a way I could move my camera, but it's really weird. I just hope it keeps moving along. Um, well, I don't know about you, but I'm having a blast. Just, I mean, if you're not watching Chris, you should come to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, you, you really need to hit either a Missy's YouTube channel or my YouTube channel to catch this video because right now I'm keeping an eye on it as it passes right in front of me. Um, because if he does fall on me, we're going to probably have to edit that piece out. Um, but he's kind of just moving along. So, you know, oh you don't bother me. I don't bother you type philosophy, you know. <laughs> um, well, which, you know, in a way, rounded the corner on my table heading the other way. So right, good. Get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh boy. Here's the freakiest thing. <laughs> so, anyways, how about a listener challenge? Right. So, what I was thinking is for people to give us like the craziest thing that they do that makes them happy that gives them enjoyment you know and i'm not i shared my craziest thing uh you know with naming the bugs and kind of imagining their life yeah. um okay i lost him a second um <laughs> so maybe that that would be a great listener challenge is you know well, what do you do for for fun and excitement um and uh you know share that with us um I like picking on people. I'm going to share that because like I grew up in a household. I was the youngest and, you know, we were always uh, jonesing on one another and just, you know, teasing. And, and that's like one of my favorite things to do is uh, 
being able to dish it out, but also being able to take it. And I will tell you, as a kid, I could not take it. I was so sensitive. I cried over everything. But at the same time, uh, like, if I don't like you nowadays, then I don't pick on you. If I like you, I'm picking on you. And so, like, I love my work environment because all the guys, like, they pick on each other all the time. And so, uh, and I love that they can pick on me and they know that I've got thick skin and it, and it doesn't bother me. But at the same time, um, so that's one of the things that I do for fun. So I pick on my family members, I pick on my friends, we tease and joke with each other. And uh, and so that might not be really weird, but if somebody witnessed the things that we do to pick on each other, that would probably be pretty weird. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And uh, I've heard other people say that, you know, if, if I don't joke with you, I probably don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. That's me. Yeah. You know, which I guess does say something about, you know, joy and fun and all that, too, is that it's probably something well shared with people we are closer to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so that there is a, a somewhat vulnerability and we're more willing to share that with somebody we feel safe. Yeah. You know, which, again, I think that goes back to you got to learn your own self-esteem and self-respect. Because can you find the humor in your life, uh, you know, without it kind of destroying, you know, yourself? So can you be comfortable with you and trust yourself enough to laugh at you? Yeah, absolutely. And and honestly, it's so freeing when you can. Like, I mean, for me, I'm like, I'm I am likely the girl that's going to slip and fall and break her neck. And I wear heels all the time. And I never bat an eye if my ankle starts to roll because I stepped on a stone or something like that. And, um, but it's because, you know, like, hey, this is the life, this is, this is the way things happen sometimes. And there's humor in it, always. So if you can learn to find those kind of things in life and learn to laugh at yourself, like, I feel like I'm a much happier person since I've learned that I don't need to be perfect. That I can, I can make mistakes and move on from them. Yeah, you know, which that in itself, if we can have that attitude you just described, is going to lower your stress immediately. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, not to dwell on that little crazy bug thing, which I have now lost, which worries me. But I did take a couple pictures, so I will. I was gonna say, please post those when you uh, or, or send those over to me. And <laughs> yeah, no, we we will. Uh, I'll make sure on uh, Missy's social media if you want to post some of those, and and I'll post them. I'll add it to the show notes. Um, be yeah, because maybe somebody will know what it is, and um, I don't know. Maybe it became the show's mascot. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> You might have to end this podcast very abruptly because this thing is now haunting Chris. It may be because he's back on my side of the table. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's time for you to move along, buddy. <laughs> so, I love it. so that, that was great, though, because, you know, we've added some fun and enjoyment to today's episode, and, and I think it's exactly what... <laughs> You all have to watch this video on, on both of our YouTube channels because <laughs> you, you'll know when it's right in front of me because I just keep staring. It's like I said, this jumps. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Well, if, if, if we have to edit this out because he jumped on me, the, then I'll put a delete section in the edit. Said, I, I will beg you to keep it. I don't do the editing. Chris does. So if you don't see it, not because I took it out. <laughs> Maybe I should just fling it elsewhere. <laughs> oh, he's coming back again. Oh, no. So, do you have any party words? <laughs> oh, no. I think uh, definitely just go out in the world and have fun and enjoy your life. I think that's the best party words I could come up with. And, and I would totally agree. And, you know, Kind of uh, challenge yourself because th this really is a challenge for me to just let this thing go because my instinct says smash it. Um, so yes, enjoy life. You know, maybe kind of think this through. I don't have a name for this thing yet, but we'll work on that. 
So definitely put in your comments for the listener challenge. If you know what this thing is after we post the pictures, let us know. Um, if this is something that can actually hurt me or kill me, please maybe don't let me know. Um, I think you've given the benefit of showing how to have fun and anxiety all in one little conglomeration. Yeah, and to you know, kind of challenge yourself to work through it because I'm doing a, a bit of exposure therapy right now. Um, yeah, so it's been great. Um, so yeah, definitely have fun. Look forward to all of your comments, and uh, I appreciate uh, Missy dealing with my bug issue um and glad that you are many miles away from <laughs> this creature <laughs> well thank you guys all so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time all right Bye -bye. have a mindful day <laughs>